Tags Part 1. In this video I'm going to be talking about some different tags and I'll kind of introduce you to L, um, attributes and so that way you kind of have an idea what those are. I did have to split this video up into two videos. This is the first part of the video. The next part we're going to be going into more detail about attributes and learning some more tags. If you want to go ahead and open up your template that you created in Notepad++, or if you haven't created one, go ahead and jot down the doc type, the opening and closing HTML tag, opening and closing head tag, title tag, and body tag. Once you have all that situated in there, I just want to first go over the title tag that is required in XHTML in order for your HTML to be valid. Inside the title tag, um, you're going to want to just put the title of your page and maybe a little short description. Uh, anything that is inside the head tag is not usually visible on the web page except for the title tag. And the title tag actually isn't visible on the web page itself. It's visible in a different location, which I'll show you when we preview this in a browser. First, let's go ahead and type in the title of our page. We're just going to put our very first website. And I'm going to go ahead and save this file. And I'm going to go to Run up in Notepad++. And I'm going to launch it in the browser of my choice. I can choose from Firefox, Internet Explorer, Safari. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and launch mine in Chrome. And let me drag it over here. And as you can see, I went ahead and placed some text in the title tag, but it didn't show up anywhere on the screen. Where it showed up was up on the top here in the tab in Chrome. And if you had an older version of a browser that didn't have tabs, it would show up on the top of the screen in the bar here. And in Firefox, it'll show up in the tabs, and same with newer versions of Internet Explorer. But our very first website showed up right here, and that's where the title tag shows up. So you usually want to put the title of your page and the a small description of your page. It helps out when search engines are searching for your site and crawling it in order to rank your site in, say, Google or Yahoo or Bing or something like that. Let's go ahead and minimize that down. Uh, we're actually done working inside the head tag for now. Uh, later in the videos, I'm going to be teaching you a couple of other things that you can place inside the head tag, such as meta tags and calls to CSS scripts and stuff like that. Um, but as of right now, just know that the title tag is required in the head tag. Go and go down to the body tag here and type in the typical hello world, which you might have seen in a lot of videos that you've been watching about HTML. Everybody usually uses this term, so uh, you know what, let's change that up. Let's change it to hello universe because that's what we're talking to here, the universe. And we're going to go ahead and save this file again, go back to our browser, and hit refresh. And as you can see, you've now got some text located on your screen here. Everything that's located inside the body tag or the body container is going to show up on your screen. And right now, we've just written in some text, and it says, Hello Universe. What happens if I wanted Hello to be on the top? and universe to be right below it. Uh, you would think that you would just hit enter right here and now that universe is down below it, if I saved this document and refreshed in the browser, that might take care of it. But as you can see, hello universe is still in one line here. And that's because there's something called white space when working with HTML. White space is considered everything that is white here. Um, you may be able to change the background color of your text editor, but as of right now, in default, it's usually white. And so they call it white space. And white space is not visible to browsers pretty much. Um, other than the first space that you put after hello to separate the two words, that is the only white space that the browser actually sees and, and uh, represents on the page. I can drop this down a million times here and it would still show up on the same line. There's ways to get around this and to get around white space and to separate your content, uh, we use different sorts of tags to do so.
The first tag I'm going to be teaching you is the paragraph tag. And that's because we're going to be putting this hello universe inside of a paragraph. And the paragraph tag is simple enough. It's just an open angle bracket with a P in the middle is the name of the tag and then the closing angle bracket. And we always have to close out our tags over here. So now I've got a closing paragraph tag. If I go ahead and save this and I hit refresh in the browser, you can see that really nothing has happened. It's still sitting there like it was before. But what if I wanted to add a different line here? What if I wanted to add hello world? And I don't want to put it in a paragraph tag, but I want to save this and hit refresh in my browser. You can see that Hello World has now shown up below Hello Universe, and that's because the paragraph tag, when a paragraph is finished, you normally go to the next line. And that's how it's done when you are typing anywhere. And so using this paragraph tag lets the HTML know that, hey, I'm ready for a new line. Let's go ahead and put this Hello World into a paragraph tag here as well. And we'll go ahead and save this and refresh in our browser and still nothing has happened. Usually you want, to, you want to visually separate your content in HTML to make it easier for you. It doesn't really do anything to the display, but uh, I usually separate my paragraphs into separate lines so that way I know when I'm looking in my HTML where my paragraphs begin and end and I'm not, I don't have a whole stream of paragraph tags along the line here. The next tag I want to teach you is called a heading tag. If you use Microsoft Word or something like that, and you're familiar with heading tags in Microsoft Word, uh, they're basically the same thing here in HTML. A heading tag uh, is just basically the heading of your page. Uh, what a heading tag will do is it normally enlarges the text and it bolds the text for you because it is the title or heading of your page. There are six different kinds of heading tags. An H1 tag through an H6 tag, and the H1 tag being the largest. And so we're going to create our very first H1 tag here. And I'll close out my H1, and inside, let's just go ahead and put the title of our page. And I'm going to go ahead and save this file again, and hit refresh. And as you can see, the title of our page is now large and in bold, like a heading would be. This is a good way to separate all your content out, uh, not only for separating the content by using these H tags and the P tag, it's also good for search engines because when they crawl your site, uh, they gather information and they gather the information using these tags. So uh, they're going to know that the title of your page is more important than a paragraph on your page. Uh, so they're going to index the title of your page and use it for searching, which would be located in the H1 or H6 tag or whichever H tag you're using. Another reason why it's important to use these tags is for when you get into CSS. Uh, you can actually use CSS to, let's say you wanted all of your H1 tags on a thousand pages to be the color of red, but you didn't want to go through each thousand page and type in you know, a specific CSS in line with the H1 tag to change the color to red. You wanted to do it across all thousand pages because that would be just a waste of time to go through a thousand pages to do so. Well, with CSS and HTML, you can actually create a CSS rule that says, hey, every single H1 tag, I want red. And when you type it in one time in that one CSS rule, throughout the entire thousand pages, it'll change every H1 tag to red. That's the power of CSS and the power of using these different tags to separate your content. Now what if I wanted to drop a line here, but I didn't want to use another paragraph tag. I wanted to use an H2 tag. Let's put in another heading. And with this H2 tag, let's go ahead and save this in the browser and refresh. 
I wanted it to go down farther. This isn't far enough. There's only one space in between here, and I want it to drop down a couple of spaces. How would I do that without inserting this H2 tag into a couple of other H2 tags, into a couple of other paragraph tags? Well, there is a tag that you can use in between these, which is called the break tag. And what the break tag does is it just adds another line. Now the break tag is one of those tags that doesn't require an opening and closing tag because it's not a container. You're not putting any information inside the tag. It's only creating a line for you. So the break tag would look something like this. It's an open bracket with BR for break, a space. You can actually do it without the space as well, but for good coding purposes we put a space there. And uh, then we have a forward slash which represents our closing tag and then a closing angle bracket. This is all just one tag right here and there's nothing going to go inside of here so it's not a container, it's just a regular old tag. Let's go ahead and add a couple of those in there and let's save this. Go back to our browser and notice that there's one space here but when I refresh it we've got a couple other spaces in between and that's because the break tag is dropping it down a couple of lines. After this H2 tag, I'm going to add another tag in here that's very similar to the break tag. It does the same thing that the break tag does, and it's a horizontal rule tag. It's HR. The difference is, if I save and refresh in the browser, is the horizontal rule tag will add a line, but it also adds a line, literally. It adds a horizontal line across your screen here. And so that's how you can separate content as well with the horizontal rule tag. Now what happens if I fill out a paragraph here? Let's go ahead and type in, I am so excited to be learning HTML because I want to design my own web page. Alright, we've got our text here. Let's go ahead and save this and refresh in the browser. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to shrink this browser up a little bit to put these on separate lines here. And as you can see, uh, our paragraph here is left aligned. That is the default alignment for a paragraph, is to be left aligned. Uh, you know that because it's pretty straight all the way along the left line here and pretty jagged on the right side here. Let me go ahead and minimize my browser. What happens if I wanted to right align the text for some reason? Well, that's where an attribute comes in. And the attribute that I'm going to be showing you is the alignment attribute. And the align attribute uh, is going to allow us to align it to the right, to the left, or justify our alignment uh, on both sides. An attribute is just a little bit of extra information added to a tag in order to create something do something to this tag. And inside of your opening tag, which is inside our opening p tag in this case, I just need to put a space after the tag name, which is p. And I'm going to go ahead and type in the attribute, a line, and it's going to equal a value. Now every single attribute has got an attribute name, and in this case the name of our attribute is a line. And every single attribute also has to equal a value, and the value is going to be located inside of these parentheses. You can use a sing uh, single parentheses or a double parentheses. Uh, but both of them work, except for I usually use a double just because that's how I do it. Now we wanted to left align this text, let's say. We'll just type in the word left. And now we just save this in our browser, or refresh in our browser, and you can see nothing's happened because it's automatically defaulted left align. But what happens if I typed in right for right align, and I save it, and refresh in my browser? You can see now that all the text has moved over to the right, and the left side is jagged. What happens if I wanted to justify this text? Because I wanted to clean it up a little bit. I didn't want it to be left aligned or right aligned. I just wanted to justify it. So go ahead and save that. Hit refresh. And as you can see now, both the left and the right side are crisp up on the line there. And I'm just going to go ahead and leave it at left aligned. And that's just an introduction to attributes. In the next video, I'm going to be teaching you a whole lot more about attributes. But as of right now, just know that an attribute always has to have a name and it always has to equal a value. 
and it's always located inside the opening tag and it's just extra information added to the tag. We're going to finish this video off by teaching you a couple of style tags such as bold tags and italic tags and stuff like that. Uh, the first tag I'm going to be teaching you is the strong tag. And the strong tag just makes the whatever is inside the tag, inside the container, bolded. So I'm just going to type in the word bold here. Let's go ahead and put a break after this paragraph so we can separate this a little bit. I'm going to save this. Let's go ahead and make this larger again and refresh. And as you can see, the text is now bold. If I go in here and I drop, if I put a break tag in there to drop down a line and I use an EM tag. EM stands for emphasize. And I'm going to uh, let's just put in italic because that's really what we're doing. We're going to italicize this by using the EM tag. Hit refresh and now we've just made italic italic. You can also for the bold tag use the B tag. This will work just the same and for the italic use the I tag. And they'll work the same if we refresh, go back. You can see that it's bold and it's italic and they're they're identical. Uh, I usually use the strong and the EM tag because those are the ones that are recommended to use in HTML. Drop down and I'm going to put another break in here. And I got one more tag to show you and it's the U tag. And you can only guess what it stands for. It stands for underline. Go ahead and save. And refresh and you can see that our text here is underlined. It's just a basic introduction of different tags that you can use. A lot of these tags are very important tags. You're going to use them frequently uh, on your pages. And in the next video, we're going to be talking more about attributes, and then we're going to teach you a little bit more about tags.